Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, a meteorologist, and all-around snappy dresser, DT from WeatherRisk.com. It's uh, 4 o'clock here in the east, 1 o'clock uh, West Coast time. Let's talk This Week in Weather for January 25th, 2014. Lots to talk about here uh, in how the pattern is shaping up and what we're seeing here for the rest of January, February. So let's get right to it. Our topics today, we'll be talking about the possible U.S. Uh, southeast U.S. snowstorm for January 28th and 29th, why it's likely that it's not going to come up the coast. We're talking about the uh, shifting, the rotating polar vortex. Yes, it looks like it's going to pull out of the uh, Great Lakes area or southern Canada and swing back up into the northern U.S., up into northern Canada, and that's going to allow for a brief interval of warming. We'll talk about the new pattern for February 2014. It's going to be a split flow pattern. Uh, it won't be nearly as cold, but it could be even stormier and significantly so. And two possible significant winter storm events for much of the country. February 4th and 5th and 6th, 7th and 8th. So let's go right to it. Uh, this is the pattern here for January 22nd, as you can see. This was the trough which caused the East Coast snowstorm on January 21. And notice you have another big trough here in the Pacific and another one here. So when you've got three troughs like that, this is referred to as a uh, three-wave pattern, as you can see. And, uh, and then also three ridges, one here, one here. One. Notice that the ridges are building. Remember, we talked about that in the video on January 16th. I know that was a while ago. But if you look at the previous video, we talked about how these two things were going to link to form a big block, and that was going to keep the polar vortex trapped. And if we can see, if we look at the current map here, that's exactly what's happened here. The, the, two, the two ridges have a link. You can see it very clearly. And the polar vortex is now trapped. That's why this cold spell has lasted much longer than the last, or the last several Arctic outbreaks we've had so far this winter because the linkage the two ridges have linked over the top of the north pole and the vortex has no place to go so as a result the feature is essentially stuck in here it's rotating it's rotating it's rotating and and the cold air never gets a chance to move out of the country or the eastern half of the country so that was the correct forecast the models handled that quite nicely now if we look at our overall tendencies we can see the NEO which is positive going slightly negative here as we go out further to, in time out towards January uh, excuse me February 10th we can see the uh, PNA, which starts off strongly positive, up up in here, drops again, and not surprisingly, the EPO, which is um, Western Pacific Oscillation, goes neutral, goes slightly negative, and then the EPO, which is the opposite of the you know, the uh, PNA, that's negative and goes towards neutral, almost positive. So this is all indication that the patterns are reversing, the flipping, and uh, we're beginning to see that change take a place. Let's talk about the southeast snowstorm for a second. Now, this was the Canadian from uh, Friday, and you could see it had a pretty good shield of precipitation from eastern Georgia all up into southeastern Virginia. And a lot of this, of course, is going to be snow. But look where the high is here, folks. Let me go call us up here. The high is over here. Now, normally, your east coast snowstorms are highs up in this area. So this is not a good sign having it here. It's good for the southeastern U.S., but it's not a good sign for the northeastern U.S., and that's an important clue. This is the uh, Canadian, uh, again, the snowfall for that previous map you can see it's got a few several inches into richmond but really heavy six to ten or twelve inches of snow from uh, southeastern virginia hampton roads all into east and north carolina almost out towards raleigh and down towards eastern uh, and central uh, south carolina now i posted this map on the uh, facebook page and this shows why uh, the pattern does not support the uh, storm coming up the coast now this here is the feature you can see it very nicely that's the trough here that's going to produce the low on the coast like this. But the problem is this feature, it's coming in this way. You see the red arrows? arrows, And that forces the system to kick off the coast. And, uh, and that's what it is. It's called an upstream kicker. And, uh, you know, simply just assuming that everything on the coast is coming up the coast is nonsense. You know, and simply just assuming, well, the models will trend northward. That's not what the issue is. Models don't force coastal storms to come north and go out to sea. The atmosphere does. So if you're listening to a meteorologist or you're reading a post from some weather nut who says that the models will trend northward, you're talking to somebody who has no idea what they're talking about. That's not how it works. Weather systems do not move according to models. The models try and reflect what's going on with the weather systems. So that's an important philosophical point. Let me clear this out. We'll go to the next slide. Now the next one uh, is a very nice, uh, go forward here a little bit. Yeah, this shows the actual European snow map here. Again, this is from uh, the 23rd of January. This is on Thursday, a lot of snow at the Carolinas. But then the models have begun to back off here a little bit. 
Now this is the uh, uh, this is the uh, morning uh, GFS ensemble, and it actually still has a pretty good snow over eastern Carolinas. The operational one is much weaker, but the ensembles do not, so you want to keep that in mind. This is the operational Canadian from early Saturday morning. Again, look, here's the this is the, this is the rain snow line right in here. See the red line here? That's the rain snow line. So this is all snow in, in the Carolinas. So it's a pretty good amount of snow in this whole area right in here. So, you know, keep that in mind. This is not, a, a, it's just because the GFS has no system or takes it out to sea, or even the operational European doesn't mean that's correct. Here's the uh, next 12 hours on the early morning uh, Canadian. And again, it's got significant snow into Hampton Roads. It really does. Elizabeth City, uh, you know, uh, northeast of North Carolina, and even a little snow into Richmond. So, again, you can't want to give up on, on this too early. Now, this is the uh, Saturday afternoon European, and this system is way out to sea, as you can see. I mean, this thing is way gone. It's gone. There's no precipitation at all. In fact, if you look at the precipitation map on the European, you can see it's got nothing. It's gone. So you're thinking, okay, now the European's taken out to sea. It's over. But if you look at the European ensembles, again, it's got significant snow over Georgia, Eastern Georgia, South Carolina, Eastern North Carolina, you know, on the morning of the 28th into the 29th. So I'm not giving up on this yet. And this is the operational uh, can, uh, Canadian. And again, it's got snow in the Eastern Carolinas. And this is the uh, Canadian ensembles, the afternoon one, Saturday afternoon. And this is pretty decent snow. I mean, you've got to take a look at this. See this red blue line here? That's the snow line, rain snow line. So all this in the Carolinas is snow into southeast of Virginia. I'm not giving up on this. I'm not going to say it's not happening yet. I still see a lot of data that supports it. So and if you look at the operational, there's the operational Canadian for this afternoon. You can see it also has good snow in the eastern Carolinas. But the problem is it still cannot come up the coast. Now, this is the Sunday, excuse me, this is the Saturday afternoon European. And again, the same problem exists. It's this feature right here. This is the trough which causes the low to form, as you can see right here. But it's this system which drops southeastward. You see it coming southeastward? And notice what happens here, folks. The polar vortex, which starts here, it now goes up this way. And look where it is by 120 hours out, by next Thursday. It's at the top of Canada again. So it goes, it goes all the way here. And because it's coming, it's doing this because this feature is kicking it out. Say this feature is going to kick out the polar vortex. And that's why, and in doing so, it's going to make sure that this low on the southeast coast cannot come up the coast. That's the important feature. Now, we can see what happens with the polar vortex here over time. There's a very impressive, this is Saturday, you can notice the date here, see Saturday morning. There's your polar vortex right in here, extremely impressive, very far south, it's massive. Look at this thing, it's freaking huge. There's the trough, okay? Now, look what happens over time. This is on the morning of the evening of Tuesday evening. Look at the vortex is now, up in here. See this? It started here, now it's up in here. See what it's doing? going up this way. And the next slide will show it even more. And we can see on the European, this is on a Thursday morning, what's happened now is there's no storm off the East Coast, and we have two vortexes. The uh, first one has moved up this way. Oops, let me call my marker here. It's gone this way, and this thing has come down this way. And that's what's happened. They're rotating. They're spinning around each other. Now, by 204 hours out, we see a bit of a southeast ridge. The European ensembles are having a southeast ridge developing because what's happening is we're now seeing more energy split the ridge. See this? We have this flow here, and now we have this flow here, and we get a southeast ridge. The vortex is in Hudson's Bay, Canada. It's still fairly cold, but not as extremely cold, and that's going to allow for a significant change in the weather pattern. Now, this is the operational a European here for this afternoon and we can see that it's got a pretty big ridge here and this looks like a fairly mild pattern. The uh, front, if you can see it, is like this. Oops. The front is like this. See? Here's our high and it's bringing up the warm air this way. So this is all warm air in here and here's the cold air up in here. So uh, that's a bit of a change in the corner of the European. Now the European may be overdoing that trough in the southwest. In fact, we can see it. Look at the surface map. I mean, in detail, this is amazingly warm air on the European here for eight days out on February 2nd. I mean, this is a heat wave for everybody in the deep south. These are temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Look at Virginia, plus 12,850. The low is up in here. You can see it right here. Darn this map, it doesn't work. You can see the low is right here. And there's our front. 
Everybody south of this is super warm. There's southeast winds bring up the warm air. A lot of cold air coming southward. So a lot of temperature contrast, but the European definitely wants to warm people up day eight. And this is the European Ensemble, 228 hours out. We have a big trough in the western United States coming into the Plain States, still a southeastern U.S. ridge. And we have a nice flow going like this. So any sort of low pressure in this area right in here is going to track in this direction. So that's what the European Ensemble is saying, that the first low on February 3rd or 4th might be rain for a lot of the mid-Atlantic states and snow only for New England. And this is the operational European at day 10. I mean, that's a huge trough. Look at that gargantuan ridge. Everyone's going, oh, my God, it's going to warm up. Well, not necessarily. Again, the European is overdoing the trough in the southwestern United States. And the other feature is look at the polar vortex. It's now running west to east. Remember? Remember when it was down here? Now look at it. It went all the way up this way like this. Now it's top. Now it's running west to east. Eventually, it'll swing down again. There'll be another cold shot, but not for a while yet. But this ridge is overdone in the southeastern United States. Indeed, if you look at the European ensembles, it's much cooler. That That is the same as that. Same time frame. Actually, yeah, actually, not quite the same. I, mean, I think I jumped ahead of myself here. But this is the, op, this is the uh, European uh, at 240 hours out, and this is the operational run. And finally, it blows the front on through, as you can see that. We are getting some cold air. There's a high here over New York State. It looks like some sort of ice storm possible in the Mid-Atlantic states. And then if we go to the next frame, this is the Canadian, excuse me, this is the GFS at 240 hours out. And this is a good map because it shows you what's happened with the uh, pattern. We can see uh, two distinct jet stream flows here now. We see this one, see it coming through. And we can see this one, the Arctic one, coming in. So you now have two distinct patterns. And that's bringing energy into the western United States. And that sets up potential for significant storminess over the eastern half of the country. And we can see this a little more enlargement here. This is the same map. And again, here's our Arctic flow. See it? Got it? And here's the southern flow. This is called a split flow pattern. Two distinct branches of the jet stream. Very, very noticeable. And then... Um, if we look at the precipitation maps, this is uh, the 6 to day, six to 10 day precipitation map. Look at the rain developing in California. Yes, that's actual precipitation. The mountain snows here. That's showing that the, the jet stream is breaking through here underneath, and we are beginning to see it. This is day uh, 11 to day 15. A lot of precipitation in the eastern United States. If it's cold, that's a lot of snow, a lot of winter storms. But again, look at California. A lot of precipitation coming in there from the west coast. Now, if you look at the extended, the European 360. 336 hours. This is February 8th. Now what's happened here is that the southeast ridge, as you can see, has been knocked down. Okay, so the, so now we're getting a jet this way, but we still have a big disturbance here coming out of the southwest. But since the ridge is knocked down, this thing's coming at a much further south latitude, and we have a lot more cold air coming back into the country. So this has got the potential for a significant winter storm February 7th or 8th. In fact, the uh, GFS ensembles have been pretty bullish on this for a while. This is from a couple of days ago, January 21st, showing a very cold pattern, week three and week four. As you can see, it. Uh, this is week three in particular, February 5th to February 11th. A lot of cold, a lot of precipitation. And if we look at the GFS here, this is uh, the GFS from... I think this is from, yeah, early this morning, and you notice it had the uh, front west of the Appalachians, a lot of warmth to the south, uh, storminess in the Ohio Valley, but the updated version is further south, and the ensembles are further south. If we look at, um, this is the 228-hour uh, uh, GFS, and again, look, it's got the nice high here. That's kind of similar to the European, over Pennsylvania, a pretty lot amount of cold air wedged into Virginia and maybe North Carolina, a lot of precipitation coming out of the Plain States. And this is the ensemble, the same thing. It's even colder. So this, this, these are these two maps are in very good agreement here, as you can see. Now, uh, again, on the 20, uh, going February 6th, the GFS has another big low, as you can see, right in here. You see that low, a lot of warm air coming up this way. But if you look at the actual ensemble, much colder, much, much colder, with more potential down the road. And this is February 8th. Again, uh, a lot of cold air coming back and a lot of overrunning. And finally, the CFS continues to show very cold temperatures here, February 8th to the 14th, February 15th to the 21st. And then um, if you look at the precipitation, a lot of precipitation over the eastern United States, the mid-Atlantic, the Ohio Valley, the northeast. Very impressive looking pattern. Anyway, that's this week in weather. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.